Welcome back to Twin Cherry Studios. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Game Hat by Waveshare, a portable solution for your RetroPie emulation station. Since buying my RetroPie and NESPI case, it spent most of its time on the shelf gathering dust. A neat party trick, but overall, not getting much playtime. After all, my PC can emulate N64 and PlayStation 1 games much better and configuring the new controllers every time that you plug them in can kill the atmosphere at any party. And the Nintendo Switch is already a much better party machine. So what is the RetroPie good for? SNES, NES, Mega Drive and Game Boy emulation. Wouldn't it be great if you could play all these games on the go? All the 8-bit and 16-bit classics in the palms of your hands. I've seen lots of tutorials on the internet of how to create your own portable kit, but a lot of those require some electronics trickery and access to a 3D printer. Enter the Game Hat. The first and only kit I can find that is basically plug and play. You do have to do some driver installation and a bit of computer wizardry, and I'll show you how to do that in another video. But it is the easiest option I could find, and it's only $50 on Amazon. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. Inside the box is the circuit board itself, on it of which is an LCD screen, two speakers, four standard A, B, X, Y buttons, start and select, two triggers, and an analog thumbstick, which is detachable. On the right side are the menu buttons for the LCD screen to change the brightness, contrast, volume, and other functions. On the left are the battery status charging lights. At the top is the on and off switch, micro USB charging spot, and a headphone jack which is more than the new iPhone has. On the back of the circuit board is the battery housing, some wizardry and this long black strip, which connects to the pins in the Raspberry Pi. We also have this top panel, which is like a faceplate and a back panel, a bag of screws, and this lovely double HDMI doohickey thing, which will connect the Pi to the LCD screen. Putting it together is really simple. First, you take the Raspberry Pi with the emulation station preloaded, if you want to know how to set that up, you can check my installation video out in the description down below. Make sure the circuit board is switched to off by looking on the back of the board next to the switch. Push it in firmly, being careful not to break any of the pins. Then take the HDMI double doohickey thing and push it into the two HDMI ports, which now should be lined up. After that, you can put the battery in, being careful to make sure that the positive and negative symbols line up. Give it a quick power on, make sure everything is in order. Once you've checked everything is running, you can add the back panel, making sure that the square cutout in the back lines up with where the SD card is. Enter your bag of screws and you'll notice that there are two types of screws, these gold nut type screws and classic cross screws. Start by attaching the gold bars to the back plate using the cross screws. Once you've done this, attach it to the circuit board using these gold nuts. And finally, attaching this face plate using more cross screws. Tighten it all up and make sure everything is secure and voila, everything is finished and almost ready to go. Honestly speaking, it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing. It kind of has this Meccano look to it, which makes it look very DIY. There was a certain charm to it, I suppose, but when all the other custom jobs look like legit Game Boys, and with the NES Pie case looking like a mini NES, it's kind of disappointing. I'm torn as to whether I like the look of it or not. The speakers are also not that great. I can't tell whether if it's the emulation software or the speakers themselves, but they have this less than pleasant sound, possibly due to the fact that I've been spoiled with the quality of speakers in most modern devices. The buttons are delightfully sturdy. They look like they can take a beating. The analog stick is a major disappointment as a D-pad would have been a much better decision especially considering that most people will be playing this on SNES and Game Boy games and it would be a more authentic experience. The battery life is very impressive. I was playing A Link to the Past yesterday for close to six hours and a few other games. But after checking on Amazon, I see it doesn't come with a battery in the US. So I guess I must have got lucky. It's pretty easy to buy one though through the recommended sections or click the Amazon link in the description down below. The screen itself is also very good. The resolution is 480 by 320, which for the size still looks clear and sharp and perfect for 8-bit and 16-bit games. And it also looks okay with PlayStation 1 and N64 games, if that's what you want to do. A few minor things I'd also like to add is whilst it's great you have access to all the USB ports and the HDMI slot with the open design, it doesn't really feel safe enough that I can just chuck it into my bag, especially if I've got pencils or small objects in there that could do a bit of damage to the board. 
The plus side to the open design is that you can essentially use it like a Nintendo Switch or the old TV boys by plugging in the HDMI to a screen whenever you want to play it on the big screen. Another downside is that there is no sleep function, meaning you must hit a save point before you shut down the system or switch it off. I found that out the hard way when I was playing The Link to the Past the other day. I didn't exit the game, so all my progress and saves were just gone. Three hours down the toilet. Looks and speakers aside, it's still a fantastic product and as a recording, it's the only thing available of its kind, especially something you can just attach your current RetroPie into and play. It's also much cheaper than the custom 3D printed options available and much easier for the layman to put together. I'd highly recommend it if you have a RetroPie machine currently gathering dust on the shelf as it has definitely breathed new life into the machine for me. That is until the SNES and Game Boy library all come over to the Nintendo Switch and it becomes kind of pointless. If you've seen or have something similar to this, then please let me know in the comments as I'm always interested in the RetroPie scene and I'm always amazed by the products that people choose to make for the benefit of others. And that's everything for today. If you've liked this video, then hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This month, I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at Simu, the Wii U emulator and the Zelda Breath of the Wild modding scene. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, don't do anything I wouldn't do. A bit sick with my voice. I don't know what's going on with my voice. It sounds. Sound, uh. Uh. It's like a weird.